Hi everyone, my name is Kunjal Deliwala. I'm the solutions engineer here at Qmetri. Today, I will walk you through the test plan module available in our Qmetri automation studio. Now, left hand side are all different modules. You need to navigate to the test plan module from left hand side bar. Now, test plan module is where users can create, record, and manage automated scripts. Here, we also have an option of dry run, meaning users can validate the test cases before performing the actual execution and see if the result is as per what was expected. Now, from the UI perspective, you have the folder structure that you can customize by clicking on new folder button. And in this folder, you can then create multiple test plans by clicking on the new test plan button. Now here you can see these are all different folders, web, mobile, API, and inside each folder contains one or multiple test plans. And inside each test plan contains multiple one or multiple test cases. Now let's go ahead and create a new test plan under the web folder. Let us name it as verify end-to-end -end user validation plan. Click on create button. Now this is where you can now create your first test case. So click on create button give the name of the test case, verify end-to-end -end user validation. Now this is where you can select the type, whether it could be web, mobile, API, and so on, and provide the description for this test case and click on the create button. Now navigate inside the test case in order to record or create your steps inside this test case. Now, this is where you will have op two options to create your test steps. One is the manual way where you can actually write the steps manually and the other way is to record the test steps. Now, once you click on record, you will see you already have a test step created for you. Now, this is where you can give the URL that you want to access or by default, it will take the URL you have provided in your default settings. Also, once the URL has been provided, you will then need to select the repository. Now, repository is nothing but it is the place where all the elements that we access on the UI would be stored automatically. So we will go ahead and select a repository. After that, you need to select a profile. Profile is nothing but the capabilities of the platform that you can configure and multiple capabilities that you can change during the execution. And you can select a specific capability that you want the test case to be executed upon. So let's say I'm selecting Chrome profile and then I'll click create on, click on start record button. Now, this means that the URL that I had given on the first step uh, would, would populate and then I can perform various actions here and all the actions that I will perform will be recorded automatically as part of the test step. Now, let's say that um, I want to verify the username and password fields that is present here. So if you right click on this particular field, you will see a QAS recorder option. Now, this, this is where you will have different options. So if you go to verification, you will see all the verifications here. Like where if, if you want to ver verify whether the field is present, verify the CSS class, verify the value, verify the text, verify whether the field is visible, not visible. All such verification options are available. We also have the wait timers available that you can utilize along with assertions and mouse events as well. Now let's say I want to verify whether the username field is present. Now this is where you need to provide the key. Now this key is nothing but it's a unique identifier of what element you are accessing on the UI. After providing the key, this is these are all the locators. Now 
the ID locator is selected by default, but as an alternative, you can select uh, from the list whatever locator you would like, whether you want the CSS as a locator or the entire X path. So you can definitely have your own locator here. Click on save. And in the similar way, I will verify the password field as well. Now let's say after verification, I will now enter its details. After entering username and password fields, I will click on the login button to login inside this application. Now let's now let's say that you know we have now logged in successfully and this you want to perform some credits so i can enter the amount that i would like to credit and then click on the credit button now as a last step let's say that i want to verify the text of this particular uh, label so I'll click on QAS recorder again. And as verification, I will select verify text. Provide the key of my choice. And this is the text that it will verify against. Click on save. And click on the logout button. to log out of this application. Now let's say that I have performed um, the steps on the web UI and I am finished recording all the steps on the web UI. Now, once I'm done, and if you navigate back to the test case, you can now see how each action has been recorded in a BDD format in a given when, n, and then keywords. So here the clarity and readability of the test steps that have been recorded is phenomenal in natural language or keyword driven that is available in our product. The readability of the test steps is much more clearer compared to any other tool out there in the market. And it makes it easy for users like business analysts or product owners who are non-coders to actually view this test case and understand what this test case is doing. Now, this is one view of viewing the test case. Now, let's say we don't want the BDD view of the test case. Then we have another option called a tabular view. So this is where you will be able to see the same test case, but in a different view where you will be able to see all the commands that you have performed, all the elements, which and elements is nothing but all the keys that you have provided along with the input and the output values. So this is how you will be able to see uh, the same test case in two different views and record a web UI. Once you are done with recording, click on stop recording. And, and this is how we saw how you can actually, how, how simple is it to actually na just navigate to a website, navigate to a web UI and perform some actions on it. And all your actions will be recorded in this format in a very simple view. Thank you all for watching.